Welcome to Tennis Sucks. It's a pickleball podcast by Travis Rett and my and Graham D'Amico. I can only do it with Travis's name in front, Graham. I already tried that time. Sense. It just didn't sound no, no, right. I can only talk with my name in front of Graham. <laughs> uh, happy Easter, everybody. Do you guys have plans for Easter? <laughs> I don't, as of yet. <laughs> Travis, tell, tell us what you're holding here. Uh, the pedophile, the sex offenders list here. In- <laughs> St. Peter's. Why would you? Why would you put that out there? Because <laughs> he looks. Because like you know, someone will listen to only like just that part, and then be like, no, "Did okay, you know sorry. Graham? Did it's, you know Graham's a pedophile and a sex it. offender?" <laughs> Are we gonna get PC on this thing all of a sudden? Graham? Like, I'm oh, just no, saying. We can't say things. I don't want someone to take it out of context oh and not listen to the rest of the pod. I'm actually gonna clip that one section. <laughs> exactly. That's and then gonna I'm be gonna a find teaser. another part and mix it in. All right. I disclaimer. Mean, you're being ridiculous. Disclaimer. Right now. Not a pedophile okay. or a sex offender, even this though a, on that paddle I look like one. Yes, on this paddle you look like. I didn't even say it was you. I just said I, there was a pedophile on here that happens to be wearing a smash hat and somewhat resembles you. This is a paddle that a friend sent me that has a sticker on it, a, a skin on it that can be printed anything. And this is what I wanted. I wanted Graham. Yeah. Like this. And so I, I intend to at some point. It's not very busy this morning, but. Maybe tomorrow night, Crescent. Just bring this thing out. See if people have as much disdain for Graham as I do and say, hey, five bucks, you can play one game and smash the shit out of Graham's face. Does it count that the shirt that he's wearing would be an illegal color for the <laughs> for playing with? I actually drilled against him with that. He brought it out and surprised me with it. And it's shockingly distracting oh, really? because every time he goes to hit the ball, I'm watching where it hits me on the face. <laughs> it's really- yeah, at first he was like not that impressed. And then he started hitting against. He's like, whoa, that's pretty cool. It, <laughs> made, it made me laugh a lot. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Like, good stuff. I would like you to see like a happy face on one side, a sad face on the other. <laughs> we can get that done. Yeah. You tell that me what you need, good. Luke. I got you covered. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's start this off. Um, Graham, you and I were talking about this the other day. Questioning whether or not we, we maybe mentioned this once before about changing the name of the podcast, right? Yeah, we have. We've I, a couple I think, times. I think we need to. Oh, really? Yeah. I think we you're do. in that boat. I'm in that. boat. I think we're getting there. I um, love our name, but yeah, I love our it's, name it's too. costing us. It's costing us sponsors, and it's costing us guests. I think right. I, I'm not. I don't know about the sponsor portion, but def, guests, de, guests for sure. Well, no, we reached out to Swing Vision. Oh. And know, they like, obviously <laughs> are a tennis company. And they're like, I was like, sp- hey, I sp- do you want to sponsor my podcast? <laughs> tennis sucks. Sucks. <laughs> hey, Swing Vision. You know, it's funny. <laughs> is I actually listened to Serve yesterday, the Roddick podcast with Kim Kleisters on it as the guest. And he bashes pickle left and right. You know, sees like it as a good rec sport. And, and that's cool. Like, I'm not necessarily sure I disagree with him on the professional front. But uh, it was clear that us shitting on tennis while listening to that is not maybe the best idea. And, and I, I gotta be honest, like, I do dislike a lot of tennis for myself, but in the last five months, I found myself watching a lot of it again. And although I, I will tell you this, I went to the Alcaraz Dimitrov match in Miami, just a little small thing. I got a shitty seat, which I had never watched tennis from that vantage point. God, it was a terrible spectator sport. It was awful. Huh. Yeah. We, I Where was see your anything. spot? Where was your spot? Fucking, we were on top row, oh, man. I mean, it was insane. Away. Couldn't see a thing. And then the points were short, and I was like, God, this sucks. And Alcaraz got smashed. And he didn't play well. You know, but I, I guarantee you, like, I mean, Dimitrov played great. But with that said, like, I guarantee if we, if we were court level and, you know, I, I, I would have enjoyed it more. But without that little negative anecdote I put in there, I have enjoyed watching tennis a lot more recently. And, yes, the two should coexist happily. Mm. It just you know, fucked me up for quite a few years as I became destroyed after all of my yeah. failures. So we were putting out a call, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll start with tennis not so bad podcast. And then <laughs> <laughs> Work our way. Yeah. Tennis getting better Into, again, Bob. Until, yeah, something, something better. But yeah, people have ideas we really would like to know. Um, yeah, the suckers out there, help us out. Yeah. Help us out. What's a, what's, a, what's a great new name for our podcast? Graham originally wanted balls, if that helps you all at all. You know we're, it's going to be a bunch of like Graham sucks, Travis is an asshole. It's gonna be, <laughs> the names are going to be all horrible. All fair points. <laughs> all fair points. But balls, I, I I still like balls. Sorry, with an exclamation I mean, point. It's a good, <laughs> no, no, no argument. No <laughs> argument. <laughs> Let's go. We know you like balls. Like, there we go. Matt, you've been setting me up for those jokes for a while now, huh? Uh, all right. Well, apparently, uh, I see in the notes here that someone has a problem with us bringing a facility oh, to yeah. St. Pete. What's going on? What's, what's Queens of the court. Who is that? The, you know who they are. It, oh, the oh. only the only podcast probably more toxic than ours, right? Yeah, like ours is toxic but fact based. Theirs is toxic but just bullshit. 
has a problem with us building a indoor pickleball facility for the greatest pickleball community on the planet, St. Petersburg. What what problem is that? I don't want to give it air, but they're basically there's like they're building from new, they're ripping off their investors, bankrupting them. Like stole the idea from. The and, and that we stole the idea ludicrous. from the pickler. It's a total, no, no. I mean, totally different one. And like, what, you fucking invented a pickleball facility? Get the fuck out of here. Man. Yeah, they're going to be like Chick-fil-A. They invented the chicken sandwich, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But okay. Anyway, it's not a new build, Queens of the Court. It's actually exists. It's 90,000 square foot building that already exists. So the investors are going to be very happy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. As All right, well the guess. community. And even that. more so the community. Yeah. We're ready for it. Yeah, especially because it's getting really hot. So it yeah. would be nice to have somewhere to play inside right now. Uh, all right. So Miami Open. Travis, you went down to Miami to play a sort of showcase MLP event. Who who else was there with you? It's a big list. 16 people. Wow. Um, Diescu, Anna Bright, Rachel Rohrbacher, Pablo Tejas, Federico Staxrud, uh, Ignatovich. Martina Frantova, Michelle Esquivel. There were more players than spectators. Jesse Irvin. There were more players than spectators. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, it was Eric Lang played great. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was a great idea. The concept was really good. It, it could have gone really well, uh, but the way it was done, where we were kind of segmented off to a, the side, I think it was hard to get patrons to walk through and see it. And yeah, it just turned out that there just weren't a lot of people watching. Yeah. That's tough. Um, well, you had a better idea for how to do that. Yes. Uh, I think the way, so when I was a kid, I used to do some like exhibitions between matches at events like that. And so in my opinion, which would have been much more cost effective. And, and I think the hard part is like, especially because there is this, this issue between tennis and pickleball, you're not going to maybe get a lot of patrons to walk to the pickleball. They're not going to go to a separate event, even if it's on the same grounds. That's unlikely. So you essentially have to bring pickleball to them. And, you know, this is in hindsight, of course, and everyone's trying their best, so I'm not trying to shit on anyone. But the, the best way to do it would simply have, you know, maybe four men, four women, and you get a pickle roll. The court doesn't have to be great. You, you take it every time between a match on center court, they have, you know, roughly a 20 to 30 minute gap between like a women's match and a men's match. Run the court out there, roll a net out there really quick and say, okay, guys, go. One game to 15, Diescu and Rohrbacher versus Brighton Rettenmeyer. Boom. Yeah. It's on. The and captivated yeah. audience is already there. You don't the have to drum exactly. them up. You don't have to market. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. You don't have to try to push them to a different area. They literally just get to sit there and be like, oh, shit, pickleball. That seems and to be they, very common sense. But maybe the Open up, wasn't up, wasn't yeah, up they, for they that. They might not have been. And I, I don't know the details of it. You know, I mean, it, James, is, James Blake is the tournament director. He's obviously an owner of an MLP team as well. So I, I think it could have been sold, but maybe there was some sponsor mm. issue. I can't tell you. Um, but it seems like if you're going to do an event at a tennis tournament, then you have to somehow bring the pickleball to the patrons who are already sitting and settled. Yeah. You can't anticipate that they are going to come to you and sit in the sun. And How would you have enjoyed watching pickleball from your vantage point at the, <laughs> at the stadium? It would not have been good. I'm not yet entirely sold as pickle uh, being a great professional product. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's the case yet. Yeah. It does great in like a couple thousand. Yeah. I, right. I, yeah, I think so. It but, was fun at, the, and, at that level. So but yeah, Kleister said at twenty thousand. What's it look like? Yeah, Kleister said on the Serb podcast that like she has a difficult time watching on TV. She finds it boring, and some of that part was like the the um, the broadcasts generally aren't aren't great. She feels like it's rushed and she doesn't know what's going on or the people, the information. But she said live, I love it. Like she's like I'm always really excited when I'm watching it. The players are super fast. Uh, their hand speed is great. Uh, the movement, and so I think that there's. There's a real dilemma there on how you transfer that kind of live atmosphere. Should Kleisters to, be trying to play pickleball or no? I think she's pretty busy, man. She's got five kids living at her house. Oh, uh, uh, uh. she has three of her own, and then two that she has as a um, that are like foreign exchange students from from Belgium who are basketball players. Hmm. Mm. So she's a busy gal. Um. So, but you at least got some pro practice in with some people. With yeah, Eddie. that was great. Uh, we got to play a lot of pickleball. Uh, the first day we did some clinics and a pro am. I got to play with this dude, pick kickball dad. I was stoked though. Elvis Crespo was there. If you guys know who that is, he's nope. the guy. Suavemente, great fucking song. Oh, I anyway, know the song. Yep. So uh, the Latin, the Latin. <laughs> you know, see, you do know. Uh, so yeah, we got to play the pro am there, and then uh, the next day we played three matches. So it was hours, five to six hours straight of playing pickle, and then the following day they did like a semi and final. 
And who was the best um, amateur celebrity there? The guy who won it, uh, Tyler. Tyler, I, I don't know his last name. He's a bachelor guy. He played with Rohrbacher. He was he was very he was good. Who was your favorite celebrity? Not player, just like who was the biggest celebrity there? Uh, you'd have to say I don't. I'm not an MMA fan, but Pablo Tejas was going nuts about it because I guess he's an MMA fan. Usman, some black dude, like. I guess he was like oh. for five years he was he was the champion and is like one of the best fight, fighters of all time. Usman. Usman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so I know. he I was know. he was there. Uh, looked like a stone cold killer. I was terrified. Well, he is. Yes, he fucking is. They all are. Correct. <laughs> so he was there. Um, and then I mean, Crespo for me was cool because you know I, I the Suavemente like, guy. Yeah, it was like the only Latin song I knew up until two years ago. All right. Yeah. And so then uh, at the same time, there was a conference Racket X that you went to, right? Uh, yeah. What was that like? Uh, so Racket X was very interesting. It was the first year that they've done it. Probably 50, 60 vendors in attendance. Uh, they had a couple makeshift pickleball courts, some for, uh, you know, companies like Acrotech that are building courts. And, and then, you know, they had a waffle court. I was there with Engage. There was some Padel court set up kind of showcasing uh, court builds and lighting and so forth. And then there was a lot of speaking. So they had a bunch of panels with various speakers discussing kind of the integration between Padel, pickleball, tennis, uh, how these all can coexist, the benefits of all of them, how to run leagues, technology. So it was pretty all consuming. And I think that, I think it'll grow with time and, and has a, a, a bright future. Did you play any Padel while you were there? I did not. I had the intention to try to play once. In fact, a friend of mine that I saw there who was a guy I was on the UCLA team with, uh, Jean-Noel Grinda, I guess he goes by the name Nala Grinda now, he just opened up the, the facility there, uh, X, which is a Padel facility in Miami now, downtown. In oh, fact, wow. their first patrons were Rufus de Soul, so he posted, like, oh, really? not bad to have our first guys be, you know, this, this group. And, and I didn't even know this, but yeah, Jean-Noel's been in it for, I like, 30 years. Musician. Yeah. And his family was like part of the start of Padel, you know, I guess, wow. which was in Acapulco, Mexico. And they were like jet setters with a group of people. And so, you know, kind of a cool storyline. And, but no, no Padel for me. Wanted Damn. to play with Josh one night, Josh uh, Elliott with Engage, but just didn't, didn't work out. Yeah. Man, I, I can't wait. You were putting Padel in the facility, Graham? Yeah. It's exciting. Yep. Two Padel courts. Oh, Queen, Queens of the court. <laughs> <laughs> don't see that. I don't have that to pick. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> not yet. Uh, I'm sure they'll invent the Graham first. Graham has never sent me a clip from anything. So when he sent me that, I was like, mm, this pissed him off. Well, I didn't watch. I didn't watch it. It's because I had people come up to me. Of course, I had people of come here. I, no, I'm well aware Crescent saying, it, but. "Did you hear?" And I'm like, "Oh, great. Now what?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, I watched it for a bit. I watched it for like a month. But then when I realized that there wasn't a lot of facts being stated and that it was just like a bot advertisement i was like ah oh, fuck this shit i want to hear the real i want to hear the real deal oh, yeah all right so i guess like the big big news this week in in pro pickleball is all the players just dropping like flies for mlp yeah um i can list them if you want and you guys want to react to some of these yeah these, maybe i the forgot some too travis if you can think of others but okay we've got the Br brasher sisters matt wright and lucy julian and lauren the Georgia Five, I like that we call them Georgia Five now. <laughs> of course. Megan and Ryla, <laughs> Suzanne Barr, Jill Braverman, and Bobby Oshiro. It's quite a lot. And myself, obviously. I announced that the other day. Yeah, Luke couldn't work out his <laughs> deal for, uh, I don't know if you know this, but he was going to, he was up for premiere, but he couldn't work out the deal for his traveling. Yeah. What was it? Your My RV. They, your RV. Yeah, right? they weren't willing to fund it. He so. had signed with Vibe and he didn't agree to play with MLP, so he <laughs> lawyered up and he's, he's, exactly, he's yeah. going after a better contract. I'm making a thumb stand. <laughs> Good thinking, Luke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play, yeah. play hardball, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So We're going to well, miss you. You <laughs> joke, but there's a guy in it called, his name is Ty Anderson from St. Petersburg. How I don't know any player in St. Petersburg possible, but he has signed up. He does not have a duper. Oh, wow. And he works for IMG, apparently. Wow. Damn. But wow. we got to find Ty Anderson, a St. Petersburg pickleball player that's apparently MLP ready. Got it. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> so what's your guys' thoughts on all these players dropping out? Like, I mean, is it, is it contract related or just like bad scheduling? Like, what's the deal? Graham I think it's more. a combination, right? It's, I think they all have a different reasoning or yeah. different reasons, but I think part of it's contract negotiation. I think part of it is for, uh, you know, like they know they're probably going to go challenger um, and they have to play six events and they're not getting paid really anything for it. Yeah. They have other opportunities like with the APP. Right. I think four APP events overlap MLP events. 
So then they would miss out on those APPs where sure. they probably have a good shot of winning prize money. And the prize money APP now, if you sign a contract with them is 2X. So, right. I, you know, like Mari, I was talking, she said that she had a bronze and a silver and took home, you know, I think like four grand plus matching. She had, you know, like an eight or $10,000 weekend at the APP right. getting bronze and silver, which is very attainable for yeah. some of these mid-level players. Right. And so I think a lot of them are thinking that too. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, well, how do you feel as an owner with some of these players gone? Are these people that you, you know, I, you would expect? To I have a moment with some of them where I'm like, gosh, I wish they were in it because I like them as people. Yeah, yeah. For the league itself, I think it has zero effect. Okay. I think that no one's looking for them. No one's going to forget them or miss them. And they're easily filled in with 20 other players that want that spot and play right about at that same level. Yeah. That's my gut on it. Got it. Um, on the flip side, though, we got new players coming in to debut. And I, it says here in Premier, so these are people that are coming into the Premier section. It's my, I'm it's guessing, I want to hear from, I want to hear from Travis what he thinks. Of right. Who's got a shot of kind of being, like it's their, you know, their first peak into Premier. Yeah. All right. Well, Jack Sock, which I feel like. That's a guarantee. It's kind of Jack, a guarantee. Yeah. yeah. Ogie Gee. I'm excited Jack Sock's playing because he Ogie didn't. Ogie Guh, that's right. Okay, go. My bad. Good, Jack. I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm just excited Jack's playing because we didn't so know if he I. was, and now he's in the draft, so he's definitely playing. It says six events, so he's in. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so you think Augie is definitely in? Or? No, I think, I mean, I don't, I don't know if Augie's definitely in, but I think he has a very, very good chance just based on his results early in the year. Okay. And, and you know you're getting a professional person. You know, I, yeah. I don't think he's going to be a problem for any team or, you know, late or behave poorly or anything like that. He's, he's, uh, he's a good asset. Uh, Will Howells? Yeah, definitely has a chance. Um, has, has showcased himself more in singles lately, but, you know, obviously a very, very good athlete, really high upside, seems like a really great kid. So I, I wouldn't be si surprised to see him taking premiere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Mari Humberg. You think she's a would... lock, I think. Oh, a lock. I think oh, so. Oh, wow. I mean, I hope. We talked about it, you know, months ago. We said she's going to be in Premier within a year. It might be even, it might be shorter than that. It might be three yeah, months. Yeah, I, I think it's now. I think yeah. she's in. You know yeah. what's funny? I've been watching Mari play recently after we had her on the pod, and I was looking to see if any guys really roped her after her return, and a lot of guys did struggle with it. Like, it was kind of interesting. Who she played? Uh, I think she was playing Frasier when I was last watching, and uh, he, had, he had some trouble returning uh, Return of Surf. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. I mean, with all the respect, Luke, I know you were up for premiere, but I'm not sure I trust you. <laughs> you're trying to die at this point. You know, you'll eat those words. Did Travis. you have trouble? Did you have trouble with it? Did you have trouble with her? Oh, so no problem return. at all. Yeah. I ripped the, the shit out of it. So we're taking you over Dylan if if you were in. Yeah. If I mean, I'm not over. gonna I'm not gonna tell you that, but I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm available. Luke, please let me know what that keen eye says next. <laughs> I need he's, you watching and, a, he's watching a lot of I film know for Ruben's the ding. Like headlining our draft now, so I need you guys in there yeah. telling me what's up. I have a lot of faith in fucking HR squared. Uh, all right, Jack Monroe. Uh, definitely in the conversation. Uh, so I'm going to say 70% yes, 30% no. But oh, that's higher than I thought. I would be surprised if he didn't. Wow. Okay. I made a good list here so far. Yeah. yeah, yeah I thought you Travis did. would just crap all over these as uh, usual. Next one's, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Iwa Radzikowska. She ha I mean, she has to. She doesn't play as many events, I think, because she has, you know, alternate obligations. But every time she plays, she wins. You know, she's she's been awesome in MLP every time. Um and, you know, I don't think she necessarily gets the best partners when she plays PPAs and APPs, but she's obviously very, very good. Mm. Why so, don't yeah. you try grabbing her then for a mix, a mix of I'll, I'll give it a shot. Huh. Do you like her? Have you talked with her? Do you I've know her? her? She seems very sweet. What I do know is that she's really left side specialized because she's got this kind of nasty two-y. I don't think she plays very well on the right. You need to be I on the right be anyways. This is perfect. I'm for seeing mixed. It. Yeah, that's <laughs> smart. <laughs> yeah, it's put, me, it's put me over there. I've seen a new setup. I have to move more to take the middle. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't think about this. You and left-handed players playing like, mix on the right. <laughs> um, all right, final one on the list, Kwang Dong. Uh, that would say, I would say out of all of them, that's the least likely. And not because he doesn't, he's not good enough, but I just don't think he's shown the results in doubles yet to, to warrant him being taken. But the guy works his ass off. He's obviously probably a top five singles guy. And... You know, again, I just I just don't know if he's had the results. Have you seen his mixed game lately? It looks good. Okay. His mixed game, his mix, his mixed game. I don't think it's this year. I think it's men's. But men's, but again, yeah. that he, 
he could just be victim. Like every time that I've seen him play mixed, he hasn't had like a very high quality partner yet. Yeah. Same in men's. Like he's at okay. okay. Would but he, he be a he right side be, or left side men's player? He'd be a player. left guy. Yeah. That's just, he's, he's really good off the two with a dink. Yeah. But yeah, you know, he might be victim to like, I just haven't had a good partner yet. He might be there. I, I just don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. the hard part about it. Yeah. All right. I made a good list because he was the bottom of my list. He's the last guy. I, almost in order. You did a great job. Okay, good. Wow. I'm spending a lot of time on this draft, so it's yeah. <laughs> well, you also have all the real, cl real clear stats, so you're probably like analyzing all this data, right? Yeah. And what? How far up re recent? How far recent does that those stats go? Is that just from They're previous not MLP? That's a pro yeah, previous yeah. MLP. So like November, let's call it November of last year. Right. So yeah, you have to make a judgment on all those players that have gotten better since then or were playing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So the format we've got for the MLP draft for both Premier and Challenger is that they get. $500,000 of league money or like MLP bucks, as it were, right? Yeah. And you're, and you're spending that on... So not for what? Challenger. This is only Premier. So okay. only Premier deals with money. Um, yep. You, so it's not that you're picking the player for money. You're picking the draft spot. Right. Right? So they're going to have basically a bidding war for the number one draft pick rather than just like how we do it in Challenger where it's a lottery and yep. we got the seventh overall pick in our lottery, yep. they don't have a position. Right, so they're, they're paying for that position. position. Yep. And they're I'm, calling it MLP units, but right. it's really, it's 500,000 of league money, and then it's five, up to $500,000 yep. of team money, of their own money they can spend above and beyond that. And then if they tie, they go into a separate room to then bid their own money uh, to take the position, I believe. If there's a, yeah, correct. Yeah, and correct. then that has no cap, I believe, on how much they spend. I no, think no, they no, can... it's still, you have, so, how it works is you have a max of a million dollars to spend for the entire draft, all four right. picks. And you have to make sure you have some minimum amount of money left to pick your third and fourth pick. Like you can't spend all million dollars on the first, first overall right. pick. You have to leave like 30,000 in the pot, more no, than that. I, yeah, I understand enough that. Enough to buy other players in the second but round. There's a, certain, there's a certain part of it that has no cap that you can go, you can go, after. You may know more than me, Luke. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, little insider hey, information yeah. from the dink, but hey, I'm listen. not aware of that. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. <laughs> I believe that once you get into that breakout room where you're like, wow, interesting. You, there's no cap on on that. You're just you can just go up and up. Do you think that that's gonna like happen, Travis? Are they gonna like? Are people gonna bid over a million bucks to get a first round pick? Wouldn't surprise me. Really? Wouldn't surprise me. You see a team going into a private room and saying, "I'll bid two million yeah. for the number one overall pick." I mean. Listen, man, a lot of these guys got a lot of money. They're competitive people. It wouldn't surprise me. Damn. Interesting. Um, all right, so for Challenger, then, you do have a draft position, which is for seven for Florida Smash. Is that Seventh right? Seventh overall, yep. Uh, a snake draft. Snake yep. draft. So yep. we're like seven, 18, whatever, 37, yep. 46. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> what, what, what are you going to, what's your draft strategy, Graham? Are you going to go female, female? We're definitely female? not talking about that. <laughs> but I finally got everything together and then hopefully I get Travis's time over the next couple of days to talk about this actual strategy so he can tear it apart and tell me it's stupid and uh, figure well, out what, who we're going to put it together. Who we're going to actually Ruben draft. Ruben knows four potential challenger players. <laughs> he doesn't even oh, know he didn't know any. Exactly. Zero. So I, I'm going to be a little suspicious right away. He's yeah. not really looking at the players. He was looking more at the, stats. the numbers. Stats and strategies, of yeah. Of course. No, I'm, sure, I'm sure he's added a value and look. Yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm still going to give him shit that he doesn't know anything about it. It's true. He'll be it's, like, he's like, he's like, um, this is probably exaggeration, but um, who's Ben John? You know, like Ben Johns, where would he? And I'm like, he's not going challenger, man. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> not, you can't be like, Jesus. I'm like, this Connor, is what, I'm what about Connor Garnett? Reviewing? I'm like, you're not going to worry about Connor he's, Garnett. He's Stop not, thinking about Connor Garnett. In, <laughs> I would, I would dare uh, Ruben to name at least three challenger players. Well, now he probably now can. He can. Now Before he this, no way. Right. Zero. That's he so funny. He could name zero. Yeah. All right. Which might be a good thing. Um, so you're paying $20,000 out of pocket for non-signed players. Tell us about that. Yeah. So there's 114, I think, signed players in the draft, Travis being one of them. And I think there's 141 unsigned players in the draft. Okay. So of those 141 players, which most of those are going to be, most of those are going to be challenger. I think it's probably about a, maybe 10 that'll go, maybe peak at, will peak at uh, premier. But of the challenger unsigned players, in order to pick them up on your team, you have to pay $20,000, which half of that, I believe, goes to the league. The other half goes to the actual player. Sounds right. Yep. Yeah. So there's some, thought, there's some thought there. I don't think it's going to keep people from picking someone. 
it's not a large amount. Yeah. Like if you like, if we wanted, I'm trying to think who would be a good example of that. I think like Augie Gee is an example. If Augie Gee is available, we really want Augie Gee. We're gonna spend the twenty thousand to get Augie. Augie Gee. Yeah. Are there any non-signed players that are worth twenty k to you? Yes, there's tons. There's oh really? Them, yeah. It's probably honestly on like our draft board. It's probably thirty percent of the people on the draft board. Wow. Thirty to forty percent, especially Challenger, because a lot of those signed contacted players are all going premier. Yeah. You know? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. 48 of the 114. So it's like, it's a big chunk. Interesting. Is that mostly on the men's side or the women's side? It's mostly, what do you mean? Unsigned like, players that yeah, are going to go yeah, challenger? Yeah. Well, women, just because there's less women in general. Right. Yeah. Okay. But there are definitely some men. Like Augie is a great example. I'm trying to think offhand who other unsigned that are good. There, there's several good male and female players that may even go premier that are unsigned. Wow. Yeah. Wild. Mari's, Mari's a great example. She's unsigned? Mari's unsigned. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, she took a buyout. All the people that just dropped out were unsigned. <laughs> right. Megan, Ryler, Susanna. Those right, were right, all right. people you, like we would have easily paid 20,000 a half. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. How do you think all of this is going to affect the overall season? Like, do you think we're going to see funky teams or we're going to see like, like a disparity in like the quality of the players or? No, I no. think there's enough good players now. You're going to see a level increase, not a level decrease from yeah. last year. I completely agree. And not only okay. that, it feels more organized and the teams are more knowledgeable. So the teams are going to be stronger than, the, yeah, I think the level is going to be a large increase yeah. over last year. Yeah. What about, um, lo does location make a difference to you? Like where they live? Yeah, for like practice and stuff like that. I mean, the team's going to be, I mean, people are spending so much money to do this stuff. So they're going to put more effort into getting the teams together. They're a lot not going to be able to. No. Yeah, play, that play, players don't have time. I'm telling yeah. you, a lot of the, a lot of these guys are. I mean, let's let's take this month for example. Let's just say in theory, you wanted to practice for the Atlanta event. This month, there's four PPA events. Guys are coming home for two days. There's you know, four PPA events. Yes. What are the four? Uh, starts with North Carolina, then it goes Houston, um, L.A., St. George. Back all to back, in April. Back to back to back to back. Are you going four all four? Days. I can't do St. George. I'm doing the three. Smart move. I wouldn't be able to do St. George either. I couldn't do it. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to do it again. <laughs> I, I mean, I played well there last year with Kohler. I enjoyed it. And then, you know, that's where the, the paddle gate happened with Tyson. But, uh, I, but and I, I liked it. It was just, it's just scheduling wise with, with my daughter. I, I couldn't make that work. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, my answer on that is there's so many factors. That's a factor that's really far down the list. Yeah. If there's 12 factors, it's number 11 or 12. Wow. Okay. Variables for drafting. Got it. All right, so uh, <laughs> I love that this one's preface conspiracy theory alert. Some no, some sort shit. of splinter go, off <laughs> league. <laughs> Tell us. I didn't even that, read. All I saw was conspiracy theory on the thing, and I was like, I'm not reading it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just a thought. All these unsigned players that are no longer in the draft that are good players splinter off and try to start their own league. Next one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not think that's possible. All right. <laughs> it's a nice, it's a nice idea. Unless, uh, unless one of them's just got some head up by Joe lead. Braverman. You can't see her just taking the reins and starting a Naples team, team event. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm trying. <laughs> exactly. I like, I like the effort. I like the effort. Um, did you, um, I saw the, uh, that the PPA was streaming the PPA Australia this weekend. Did you watch any of that? I did not. I didn't either. I know Wes Gabrielson was there. I know. Have you played him before? I've played him before. I know Amelia Schmidt was there. We got our eyes on her. I, I probably should watch some of that footage. Yeah. Did you watch her play at all? I don't remember if she was playing or not. I watched, it was uh, Hargraves and then some other people. I don't remember. Were you watching really the fake Smash play? No, it was just P straight PPA. It's not MLP. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. How about this though? We got to talk APP Miami really quick. The guy of the weekend, right? Who's the guy of the weekend at APP Miami? Oh, I know. I didn't, I didn't want to mention him because I've got him high on the list. Oh, okay. <laughs> purple Jesus. The purple, purple Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> purple Jesus math now. He played with Eric you know Lang. Wait, Diane. what? No, tell us about it. <laughs> what? Okay, so there, there was a guy uh, in the draw that I thought was like a joke because I looked at the draw early and there was a guy signed up as Purple Jesus Machow or something like Mathau, that. Mathau, I think. Mathau. And yeah. I'm like, like, I need to see this fucking guy. <laughs> Turns out he's good. 
<laughs> he and Eric Lang beat Tardio and Diescu in dubs. Wow. And he's like thir early 30s, plays intermittently. Eric's trying to get him to play more because I guess he's from uh, Pacific Northwest. And the only picture I saw of him <laughs> looks like this hyper athletic gazelle flying through the air for an urn. And I was like, this guy's the purple fucking Jesus. Purple Jesus. Oh, wow. You know? He made so a splash for sure. He made a splash. And then there were some weird results like Fad beat JW in singles. Uh, JW went 0 and 2 in singles. He lost to who next? Like Michael Lloyd, I think, second in the bash draw. Michael Lloyd. And yeah. then your boy Spencer Lanier beat Wait. him. So Graham's got a win over the guy that beat the guy that beat JW. Wow. How does that make you feel, Graham? I kind of knew it. Yeah. It's like you. Yeah. Are you, I'm in contract negotiations. I was going to say, you, you <laughs> want to say that one works. Wait, I'll never, we'll never, went up a lot. we'll never figure out my contract. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. I forgot about the APP Miami. Yeah. That's, that was yeah, And wild. then JW and Dylan ended up winning it. So, you know. Yeah. I and mean, one of our buddies, Crescent Lake guys, got 5 0 singles. Yeah, goal. fucking yeah. Maroon. Yeah. Won 5 0 singles. I Apparently, watching... like, injured the Achilles early and then went dummy. Yeah. And Grayson. Grayson Golden made semis. Grayson Golden. No, he made finals. Oh, he made finals. That's right. He lost to Hunter. Yes. He lost to Hunter he in the finals. Wow. Another local. It's crazy. He's local, right? Yeah, he's local. He went to IMG. He was a good tennis player. Super athletic. Hits the shit out of the foreign and the serve. He's in the draft. He's in the draft. I, I don't know what his double skill is. Like, maybe it's improving, but um, he's certainly a very, very good singles player. Um, all right. So we've got our first event, Atlanta, May 9th through 12th at Lifetime, which is that really nice facility, right? Yeah. And then is, is, are these a list of MLP ones, DC, June, and then Grand Rapids? Yeah, those are all the first three MLP events. And how it's working for, I know for Atlanta and DC is they're bringing 12 teams. Six premier, six challenger to each event. And so I know that the Florida Smash will be at Atlanta and then they will be at DC for those yeah. dates. And then all 24 teams play a mid season in tournament uh, competition or tournament competition. And that's in Grand Rapids in July. Yeah, got it. So Travis will be at that. Travis and I will both be at that one. Depending on where Travis gets picked up, yep. which I'm sure we're going to talk about, hopefully he'll be at Atlanta and DC too. All right. Well, yeah, let's talk about it then. So are we worried that he's not going to get picked up in Premier or what? I'm not worried about it again. I think he's definitely going Premier. And I actually like it. I keep thinking about this. How awesome is it that you're probably a fourth round pick every time because you're, you're going to be on a good team? Yeah. I mean, I think I haven't played great this year for a variety, variety of reasons, but historically, especially with a real, real clear stats, I should be okay. Yeah, do you know if any other teams support the stats? You think? Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, a, lot a lot of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Especially, um, again, predicated on like what the hard eights did. You got to think, shit, this has merit. And again, that's the, that's the hard part always, I think, about PPAs and so forth. There's one, maybe some people aren't built for the MLP structure, and then you never know like who has good partners. How did the partner play? Yeah. Those, those, are, those are, you know, how are their draws? Uh, there's, there's factors that are, that are in there. Yeah, yeah, even if they didn't buy the stats, I think that Travis has said it often enough. They know he was high up on it. Mm. <laughs> I was, I was second actually, was second. Mm. second and third. I always ranked. Never, I never dropped you should just three, read, You should just read the stats straight across. I had a six hundred percent winning percentage. I had a impact player impact of two oh, points. That's where I really thrive. <laughs> it's in the player impact. I impact the shit out of things. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. So, uh, yeah, is there a team that you would, uh, you'd like to play on, Travis? What's your, no, what's your perfect team? Oh, yeah, what's your perfect team? Oh, like as far as players? Yeah, like you had three other people, two women and one man. Who is it? Like I if mean, you put a team together I in put, Premier. I put Rohrbacher or Bright top of the list. I together? Think, fuck, that's impossible. But, but either one of them is I just, think it's going to happen. I think Orlando's one's going to come out of pocket to grab Orlando Squeeze again. They might. That's the one that's going to spend the money. They might. Um, but I don't, I don't think you can get both of them because they're going to they're gonna pay... They're going to both go so early. That they're going to cost close to the max. Yeah. To get. <laughs> yes. I mean, obviously, Anna more so than Rachel, just because she showcased that more. But Rachel's obviously on the way up. And, um, yeah. you know, they're, they're both very good at singles as well. Uh, really, really good team players. So if I could have any team, it would probably be like, you know, Ben and Anna Lee. or, or Sorry, not Ben and Anna Lee. Ben and Anna Bright or Rachel Rohrbacher. And then, you know, throw in a Diescu or throw in a... Uh, he basically wants to play with the Orlando Squeeze. I basically want, uh, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, look at their team. First of all, it looked like they had the most fun, and they were all super supportive of one another. It was it was a fucking awesome team. Like they did a great job. They they picked, 
not only on 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 play and performance, but they picked on quality that, of people. That and, was and, supposed to be you. You were the day ski spot. So, no, I was the Zane spot. Or the Zane spot. So shout out if Zane and them go too early and Travis is around in fourth round, you need that second male for the squeeze. I we think know they had guy. an issue with me being like a, a Florida smash owner, which was the... Well, you're, that's challenger now, so that shouldn't affect them in any way. You're not going to throw. <laughs> you're not going to throw matches in premiere. I wouldn't throw matches help, no matter what. Right to help. It's, it's in the, fact the no idea benefit. that I could just beat Graham in anything is fantastic enough. <laughs> there's no price to put on that. <laughs> wow. Um, cool. All right. So when is the draft? How many weeks is it this week? Yeah, it's it's the April second, okay. which is tu- this premiere. Tuesday. It probably happened before this pod gets right. out. Okay. All right. Where, where are you going to do it? And we're the it? third. It's remote. I'm going to do it from here. Travis will be in North Carolina, so I'm hoping he's not we playing. We can do it out on the courts. That would be great. I'm hoping he's not playing, so that way he can actually be in the draft itself. I'd like that. I think that's unlikely, though. It's a long day, that first Wednesday. Play three matches. Mm. Yeah, it's progressive draw in North Carolina this right. coming week. Right. Interesting. Which means Travis is playing singles. Really? I am. Let's go. Wow, finally back. How are you feeling? You think you're ready for singles again? As ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> he says despondently. <laughs> Come on, we're trying to get you We're trying to get you on the Orlando squeeze. Uh, are you ready for singles or what, I'm man? I'm fucking psyched. Yeah. <laughs> now we're we talking. Go. You want to be part of that team chemistry or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I actually get to play a buddy of mine, I think, first round, Ryan Eveloff, who's a very good singles player. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about it. Great. It, <laughs> We're actually filming, so we'll get to see your game and give you some <laughs> yeah, pointers. <yeah. laughs> all right. Well, I think that that's it. I think that's that's what we that's what we got. Yeah, that's it, guys. Oh, um, fucking so tennis sucks. Sorry. This, yeah, but right now tennis sucks. Ish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's, yeah. it's getting better. Please, yeah. you know, give us a decent name so we can figure out if it's. Yeah, serious, serious suggestions only. I'd like some non-serious I'd suggestions. Like some non-serious yeah. suggestions yeah. Also. Great. <laughs> oh, make them based on Luke and Travis then, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at this guy. <laughs> I take enough crap in my actual life. I don't need it on the yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> on social media. That's All funny. Right, All right, thanks, sucks. everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys.